This video is a combination of all the parts from the All Clone Trooper Types and Variants series for easier viewing. Because we combined three parts into one video, the list numbering will reset every now and then. First are the standard clone troopers. They were the most common troopers in the clone army. Because they were bred for war, they served as excellent soldiers and worked extremely well with their Jedi allies. For the first half of the Clone Wars, they wore standard Phase 1 clone trooper armor. Although, this armor provided protection from the environment and blasters, it was heavy and uncomfortable. This led to the creation of the Phase 2 armor, which not only was lighter and more comfortable, but it also provided better protection against blasters. Standard clone troopers were generally equipped with the DC-15A blaster rifle, or the DC-15S blaster. Second are the Clone Ordnance Specialists, also known as the Bomb Squad Troopers. They were specialized in bomb disarmament and disposal. They wore orange marked armor and were equipped with explosive sensors, ion probes, and bomb diffusing tools. Third are the Clone Cold Assault Troopers, also known as Clone Snow Troopers. They were trained to operate in extremely cold regions, and they were equipped with modified armor and equipment that helped them effectively fight in the snow. Fourth are the Clone Flame Troopers. They were specialized in the use of BT X-42 heavy flamethrowers, as well as other incendiary weapons. They wore specialized armor that protected them from extreme heats. They were used to clear out large groups of enemies in enclosed areas. Fifth are the Clone Lancer Troopers. They were specialized in speeder bike combat. They rode special Aerotech 105K Lancer bikes and wielded powerful lances. Sixth are the Clone Scout Troopers. They were used in situations that required fast-paced combat, along with their advanced camouflaged armor. They wore a body glove that covered their neck, legs, and arms, which allowed them to move quickly. Their helmet had a wide visor plate, which gave them a larger visual area. Seventh are the Clone Jet Troopers, also known as Aerial Clone Troopers. They were equipped and trained in the use of jetpacks. They were effectively used in ambushing the enemy from behind and above. Many of them were equipped with electromagnetic pulse launchers. Eighth are the Clone Shadow Troopers. They were primarily used for reconnaissance. They wore very expensive armor, which allowed them to alter their physical appearance, being able to take the appearance of a Hut Cartel or Black Sun mercenary. The armor also reflected scans and could act as a jamming device. Ninth are the Galactic Marines. They were trained to be able to fight in many different environments, even in space. They were specialized in boarding and capturing enemy starships as well as planetary assault. They wore very unique body armor with purple and white coloration. Their masks and visors were designed to keep out various hazards such as snow, sand, and ash. Tenth are the Clone Marines, not to be confused with the Galactic Marines seen previously. Clone Marines were used for warding off enemy boarding parties, as well as conducting boarding parties themselves onto enemy vessels. They were equipped with jetpacks and armor that allowed them to stay in space for long periods of time. Eleventh are the Clone Scuba Troopers. They specialized in underwater combat. They wore special armor that was lighter than regular clone armor, and was designed to be effective underwater. They were outfitted with aquatic propulsion packs on their backs and fins on their feet to increase agility underwater. Their helmets possessed powerful lenses and sensors to allow them to see through potentially cloudy water. Their helmets could exact viable oxygen from the surrounding water, eliminating the need for oxygen tanks. Twelfth are the Clone Blaze Troopers. They wore heavy combat armor that was equipped with a jetpack. They were equipped with various weapons, including flamethrowers and miniguns. They were used for busting through enemy lines and clearing a path for incoming friendly infantry. Thirteenth are the Clone Paratroopers, also known as Clone Airborne Troopers. They were specialized in dropping into battle from high altitudes. They wore a special helmet and were equipped with a parachute when dropping into battle. Fourteenth are the High Orbit Precision Entry Troopers. They were clone commandos who were launched from orbit in one-man escape pods. These escape pods would split open when reaching the target and allow the trooper to descend to their target. Fifteenth are the Clone Heavy Gunners. 
They were trained to use some of the most powerful weapons and explosives in the military's arsenal. These included missiles, grenades, and demolition charges. They were usually equipped with a massive blaster cannon. 16th are the Clone Heavy Troopers. They were commandos that specialized in the use of heavy weapons, like the PLX-1 Portable Missile Launcher. They were used for anti-vehicle and anti-armor duties. 17th are the Covert Ops Clone Troopers. They were used to hunt down and kill clones who deserted the clone army. Last for part one are the Blurg Troopers. They rode on top of Blurgs and used them to mow down enemies. Blurg Troopers were usually equipped with a flamethrower. First are the Advanced Recon Commandos, also known as ARC Troopers. They were far more independent and physically superior than regular clones. Many commandos got direct training under Jango Fett himself before he died. They wore lighter but stronger armor than regular clones, and they usually also wore a pauldron and kama. There were two different classes of ARC troopers, the Null class and the Alpha class. The Null class commandos were the first batch of clones ever created. Because of this, they were somewhat unstable and violent. They were supposed to be terminated, but were saved by Cal Skirata another of the Mandalorian trainers, who not only personally trained these clones, but also later adopted them. The Alpha class was the successful batch of ARC Trooper clones. They were stable and obedient. They were very independent thinkers, and would argue against the Jedi Orders that they saw as incompetent. Many of them even disobeyed Order 66, questioning the legitimacy of Palpatine's claim of Jedi being traitors. Along with the classes, there were different variations of ARC Troopers. These included the Advanced Recon Commando Heavy Gunners, who used high rapid-firing weapons like the Reciprocating Quad Blaster and the Z6 Rotary Blaster Cannon. The Biker Advanced Recon Troopers, who were deployed on Bark Speeders during combat, and the Advanced Recon Force Troopers, who carried out short-range reconnaissance. Second are the Clone Commandos, also known as the Republic Commandos, not to be confused with the Advanced Recon Commandos seen previously. Clone Commandos worked as a Special Forces unit, and they were each trained by Mandalorian instructors. They were often referred to as being the Army's deadliest soldiers, and they were sent on missions that included covert infiltration, sabotage, demolition, and assassination. They differed from ARC Troopers by wearing stronger and more advanced armor, and they were more obedient as well. There was a variation of the Clone Commando, called the Felucian Commando. They were specialized to operate on jungle planets like Felucia, and they wore camouflaged commando armor. Third are the Clone Riot Troopers. They were specialized in riot control and policing. They were armed with riot shields and stun batons. Fourth are the Clone Assassins. They were specifically trained to combat and kill Jedi. The argument for having these clones in the army was to use them as a security measure for if the Jedi ever rebelled against the Republic. Clone Assassins wore modified armor that allowed them to perform very agile physical attacks. The armor had two twin vibroblades attached to the elbows, which they used to effectively combat Jedi. Fifth are the Clone Engineers, also known as Clone Combat Engineers. They were used to repair vehicles and perform demolitions. They were usually equipped with a Bacta and Ammunition Dispenser, F-187 Fusion Cutters, and Shotguns. Sixth are the Clone Snipers, also known as Clone Sharpshooters. They were specialized as snipers and were used to thin out the enemy infantry from a distance before the main ally force engaged them. They wore light armor and were equipped with sniper rifles. Seventh are the Special Ops Clone Troopers. They were used for stealth missions and they wore a special helmet that enhanced their hearing and allowed them to pick up vibrations from afar. Their armor was also dark colored for camouflage. There is another version of this trooper called the Stealth Operations Clone Trooper. They were used to operate the stealth ship during the Battle of Christophsis. They wore slightly lighter colored armor, and they had a different symbol on their shoulder pad. 
8th are the Stealth Pilots. They were used to pilot the stealth ship during the Battle of Christophsis, and they wore unique clone pilot armor. Ninth are the Clone Trooper Medics. They were used to treat injured clones during battle. They wore backpacks that contained necessary medical equipment needed to save clones from dying. There were also clone medical officers. They were used on Republic hospital stations and treated more serious injuries, and they had access to more advanced medical equipment due to where they were stationed. Tenth are the clone naval officers, also known as clone navigators. They were specifically trained in technical and tactical aspects of naval command. They mostly served as aides for regular human officers and admirals. Eleventh are the ATRT drivers. They were specialized in piloting ATRT walkers. They wore a special helmet that featured a boosted range comlink for when they are away from their walkers. They usually carried a circular life form scanner on their chest, which helped them to find friendly hostages during battle. Last for part two are the ATTE commanders. They were trained in operating ATTE walkers and other armored vehicles. First are the clone shock troopers. They were the special forces of the Coruscant Guard and served primarily as a police force for Republic government buildings and prisons. They also acted as bodyguards for politicians in some cases. They wore distinctive red clone armor. There was also a variant of the clone shock troopers which wore armor similar to the ATRT troopers. They used massifs to track down prisoners who escaped. Second are the Clone Trooper Pilots. They were trained to pilot starfighters and gunships, as well as to repair vehicles when needed. They wore special clone armor that supplied oxygen to their helmets. In the later years of the Clone Wars, they wore a unique helmet that was not fully enclosed. Third are the Clone Tank Gunners. They were trained to operate cannons and guns on tanks, warships, and artillery cannons. They wore regular clone armor that was outfitted with additional armor padding on their chest and shoulder plates. Fourth are the Clone Trooper Commanders. They were high-ranked clone officers that led entire battalions or regiments, which included 576 to 2,304 other clones respectively. Clone commanders generally stayed in the back of battles and commanded their troops from command centers, only getting involved in combat when the situation required it. Initially, Clone commanders were recognizable by their yellow markings, but this was later changed when clone commanders were assigned to specific clone divisions. Fifth are the clone trooper captains. As high-ranking officers, they led entire clone companies, which included 144 other clones. They acted as diverse leaders and fought with their men in the front lines. Initially, clone captains were recognizable by their red markings, but this was later changed when the clone captains were assigned to specific clone divisions. Sixth are the clone trooper lieutenants. They led entire platoons, which included 36 other clones. As was the same with the other two ranks previously, clone lieutenants initially were recognizable by their blue markings, but this was later changed when clone lieutenants were assigned to specific clone divisions. Seventh are the clone trooper sergeants. They commanded squads, which included nine other clones. They were initially recognizable by their olive green markings, but this was later changed when the clone sergeants were assigned to specific clone divisions. Eighth are the clone cadets. These were clones who were still in combat training on Kamino. They underwent rigorous training and were tested by their performance in the battlefield simulation rooms. They wore padded clone armor that included a clear helmet visor. Ninth are the clone advisors. They served as advisors to clone commando squads by informing the squads about their missions, status, and objectives. Tenth were the clone stormtroopers. They were the first generation of stormtroopers. They initially wore the Phase II armor, but it was later replaced with the standard stormtrooper armor. Clone stormtroopers were eventually mostly replaced by regular human stormtroopers. Last are the anti-troopers. They were specifically bred by the Kaminoans as a private army that they could use to rebel against the Galactic Empire. They wore Phase I clone armor and were equipped with jetpacks. They were also trained as expert snipers. Thanks for watching this video. 
Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.